Well, I've been reading lately that a few people on the forums have noted that the C8 Corvette's hood is becoming unlatched while at speed. This has caused some damage to the hood and fenders and luckily not resulted in any injury, but I myself, being an owner of a C8 Corvette, I wanted to try and figure out how this is happening and of course how I might be able to prevent it from happening on my own vehicle. Uh, see if there's anything systemic involved or see if it's just an individual error that has occurred. So first let's just talk about, by the way, when I refer to hood, I'm referring to the front trunk area, the frunk that some people call it. Um, that's what I'll call the hood because it's in the front. I'm just going to use that terminology and that way when I compare it to another car, uh, we're both talking about the compartment in the front and that is the hood. So first of all, how do you open a hood on a C8 Corvette? Well, there's two different ways. One of them is with the Corvette key fob. And as you can see here, it requires a double click on the key fob. It, nothing will happen if I press and hold for a long period of time. Right here, I'm pressing, 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 nothing will happen. If I press once, nothing will happen. If I press once and then again too far away, nothing will happen. Once, one, two, three, four, five, a second time. So, it's very particular in how it unlatches. It requires two in-sequence clicks. One, two. Now, if you happen to catch that through the microphone, then you'll notice that two clicks to unlatch actually happen, not one. I'm going to close the hood, and we're going to do that again. Now listen, you're going to hear two separate clicks, and the hood is going to open up two different amounts. The first click is going to be the electronic safety latch. The second click is going to release from the electronic safety hatch. So the first click is to the safety hatch. The second hatch is away from the safety hatch, basically fully um, disengaging the hood. So now let's listen and watch. There, you heard two. Click, click, click. Okay. And that's true. It is completely released from the safety hatch in one double click of the remote. So there was nothing that else that needed to be done to have the hood completely free and able to raise. Uh, that's all you had to do was a double click on the remote. Okay, so, and that releases the hood. It could pop up. And now when I shut the hood, that is on top of the safety hatch. I had to very slowly bring the hood down and lay it on top of it in order to get that to happen. Now, something that General Motors posited was that people are actually leaving the hood unlatched and that's they're driving away with the hood unlatched. I find that very hard to believe and here's the reason why. I can actually bring this hood just down to the fulcrum on the shock, the hood, hood strut, um, just right, I mean, not, I'm definitely not slamming the hood. I'm literally getting to the point where the hood just closes on itself and releasing. And you'll notice when that happens, the hood is, the hood is safety latched. So you could extremely weakly close the hood by just allowing it as softly as possible to fall down onto itself, and it will still be safety latched if you do that. Okay, I just unlatched it. Now most people aren't gonna do that. Most people, when they shut the hood, they're gonna walk up to it, and they're gonna push it down like that, okay? And once again, it's on the safety latch. Okay, so, I mean, is it possible that somebody, when they were closing the hood of their car, they got out, they closed the hood of their car, that they literally walked it down with their hand and laid it very carefully on top of that safety latch and then got in their car and drove away. Uh, anything is possible. I find that to be extremely improbable that that happened. So, um, how's the other way that we can open the hood? Um, the other way that we can open the hood is to go just come right underneath the driver's side headlight and right here there is a button and we press it and again you got the double unlatch so this results in the exact same thing it unlatches from the safety latch as well it allows the hood to just freely come open so there's no safety latch action whatsoever by opening the hood either of the two ways that allow it via the key fob or via the front push button okay now 
there is, I, I kind of lied, there is one third way of opening the hood, okay? And that third way is, of course, the safety hatches that are required to be in all United States cars in their trunks, right? Okay, in the hood. <laughs> this, is a, this is a trunk, basically. All right. And that, on this car, is electronic as well. And now you're going to notice something as well. Because this safety hatch is electronic, once again, you're going to get the double sound. And, by the way, the hood is already open, so this there are no safeties on this button. It works when you press it. Watch what happens here. There you go. Clicked. In fact, that was a double click. Now watch, I'm going to press it once. Double click. Okay, so pressing that button right there in this uh, trunk or hood, <laughs> under the hood, um, will also allow the hood to come up in the air completely, no safety hatch whatsoever. Now, one thing that you probably are already putting together that has me concerned is if you had some objects here in the car and you were driving and let's say you were driving up to 25 miles an hour and then at that point you knew that the speed limit was coming up so you, you let off the accelerator and something then because of the weight shift that's going to happen when you let off the accelerator something shifts here in this compartment and presses up against this button so maybe that's the first suspect that i personally would consider for myself meaning i'm going to be extremely cautious with what I put in this uh, front trunk area, the hood, under the hood, and I will be very cautious. I may even put something over this right here so that it can't be pressed. Um, this, in my opinion, is low-hanging fruit to be changed because, um, it, you know, with, with no safety over this, and I understand it has to be easily accessible, but in most vehicles, uh, that is something that has to be manipulated in some way. Um, then just easily right there be pressed. And if something were to fall up against it and it allowed this hood to be relaxed under speed, which it does, then that's going to be a real issue. So, you know, I understand you can't, you, you, you're not allowed legally to make that device not work once you put the car in park, uh, I'm sorry, in reverse or drive, in, in some type of drive gear. Um, that switch still has to work for safety because somebody could still be in the in the you know stuck here in the front trunk of the car and they still have to be able to get out um, so that could be an issue so let's just compare a couple of things real quick so that's how the c8 corvette you know hood or front trunk works okay how about a normal front engine car how about a normal front engine car? Here is a Alfa Romeo Giulia. Um, you have the hood here. Well, you know what you do in order to open the hood is you go in the car and you pull a lever and there we've pulled it and the hood comes up. But it doesn't come up past the safety latch, meaning this one happens to be mechanical, but in the Corvette, they're both electronic, meaning the safety hatch is electronic too. With a mechanical, in this case, it does not come up above the safety hatch. If I go try and raise, it's not going to work. Okay, it is still latched. It's latched on both sides. Actually, there's there's two latches here on this car. You have to go under here and press something, manipulate something, in order for the hood to go up. Okay, so now it went back down. No problem. Uh, the C8 Corvette. You'll notice there is no second step. The safety latch is completely disabled when you attempt to press the button to open the hood or to, to open the hood via the button that's right there. Okay. Right now, what we're seeing is that General Motors and Chevrolet on the C8 Corvette is treating the front trunk of the car, or the hood as I'm calling it, much like a front engine car is treating their trunk. So here we have the Alfa Romeo Giulia again. The key fob is very similar to the General Motors key fob. You can see right here, double click right here, starts the vehicle, double click right here, opens the trunk. Of course, in this case, a rear trunk. Now, uh, once again, you do have to double click it. You can't just be holding it down. But when you double click it, boom, the trunk comes completely free, just like the C8 Chevrolet Corvette's front hood comes completely free. Now, the problem with this is that 
on a, on a mid-engine car, the front uh, trunk area is not actually a trunk. Uh, it is on the front of the vehicle. It opens uh, on the front of the vehicle. So if any uh, wind should get scooped up, uh, that hood will come directly up in the air. Um, that's a dangerous thing. With the trunk of a front engine car, a uh, trunk that's in the rear, um, there's a reason there's no safety catch required because it's really not that big of a deal if it comes up while you're driving. And also on this car, as required in every trunk, there is the emergency uh, hatch that allows um, someone, if they were accidentally stuck in this trunk, to be able to get out. And you notice this one, if you press on it, if you accidentally, or something were to brush up against it, a beach chair uh, fell into it while accelerating, um, you know, anything, nothing's going to happen. Here you have to stick your finger in and push over, and there's a picture showing that, so it'd be very easy for people of all ages and uh, to be able to figure out how to get out, but it's, it's not something that would be accidentally easily manipulated. So that's probably another piece of low-hanging fruit for General Motors, is to fix that issue on the C8 Corvette uh, as well. Okay, so now let's talk about some other possibilities of what could be happening to have the hoods come unlatched in the C8 Corvette. All right, let's say I go to get in the vehicle in the Corvette, I have this key fob in my pocket, and as I'm getting in the car, I uh, accidentally uh, unlatch the hood of the vehicle. I don't think that this is a likely possibility. There are a couple reasons for that. Number one, first, as, as we saw, it's it's a very specific and intentional pushing of twice on the uh, fob here in order to get that front um, hood opened. Okay, so that's it, you can't just accidentally hold it too long or it's smashed up against something in your pocket and holds it too long. You can't um, just bump it once. Um, it's very specific and, and that's unlikely to happen. Uh, if, as an example, how often do you come out from eating dinner and your car is started? I'm guessing that doesn't happen very often, and that's because it's the, it's the exact same motion that's required to start the car. It's very specific to presses. And, you know, we aren't getting a bunch of General Motors people, uh, C8 Corvette owners, that are coming out and saying, oh, my car was started accidentally, you know, and, and that's because they're probably not, you know, somehow precisely correctly hitting that key fob in their pants. And... As soon as you got in the car, if your hood was open, you're going to have a very clear, and we're going to show you that, you're going to have a very clear indication that the hood is popped. So here's the hood popped. Uh, we'll even do exactly what the other driver, let's say they do. They open the hood. They're at a car show. They're pulled over on the side of the road, whatever. Uh, they get absent-minded because they're talking to their friend. They put the hood down and watch. I guarantee you it's safety latched. Yep, it's safety latched. Okay, so it's not going to pop up on them, by the way. Now they go and get in the car. They open the door. They get in the car. They start the car. What's the first thing they're greeted by? Hood open. And bells. I mean, that's pretty clear. And then it says hood open, 82 mile an hour top speed. That's something that GM needs to fix too, because I actually um, did the hood uh, before when I was testing without any safety latch whatsoever. I, I laid it down on top of the safety catch, and you still get the you still get the same message that it's like, hood is open. You're limited to 82 miles an hour. I think they ought to probably do something about that because uh, I don't think that that hood is going to stay down non-safety latched up to 82 miles an hour. So uh, I, obviously it's not staying down past 30 miles an hour for people that had a pop up on them. So uh, the bottom line there is that the 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 hood um, is is going to give you a warning when it's open if you get into the car with it already opened. Okay. Now. What about in the situation where you open the hood um, while the car is uh, in motion? Is that possible? Well, we're back and I did a quick edit for you and you'll notice I relatched the hood and here we are with the engine on. When we're in park, yes, you can release the hood. I'm not gonna bother showing you that. You're gonna have to take my word for it. Um, if you double click right now, the hood will open in park. But it's gonna become very obvious because once again, it's gonna tell you that it was open. But let's say, you're driving with a key fob in your pocket, the car's in drive, will it work? The answer is no. Just like 
the trunk on that Alfa Romeo over there. I tried it with my key fob. I could not get the trunk to come open when the vehicle is in anything other than park. Nope. Okay. We're going to go to reverse. Same thing. Maybe he pulled out of the parking lot first in reverse. Well, could you have gotten it to happen in reverse? Nope. It will not work when the car is in anything but park. We're in park and you heard it, you see it, pretty obvious. So obvious that here we did another Ninja edit and now we are in the Julia from Alfa Romeo and we're gonna put the Julia in drive and we're gonna notice the same thing when we go try and release the rear trunk, nothing happens. And what it says there is, to operate trunk lid, shift to park. Let's put it in reverse. Once again, to operate trunk lid, shift to park. Okay, so in conclusion, what do we need to say about this issue? Well, we don't know exactly why it's happening. We don't have a conclusion yet because there hasn't been enough full investigation to figure out exactly what's happening. But we know some things that could be improved. We know that the safety latch is not really um, performing its function as a safety latch at all. Because when you open the hood from either location, whether it be the fob or the button, the safety latch is not engaged whatsoever. So we know some low hanging fruit could be to put an electronic button, you know, right here, uh, where when the, and then have it so when you do um, unlatch the hood via the fob or via that button, it, uh, it releases onto the safety hatch, stays safe, um, and then you would just press the button, you know, let's say right here, that releases the safety hatch, just like you have on mechanical hoods, only there is a mechanical hatch, right? But you can do it with electronic, that's not a big deal. Um, the uh, second thing is this is going to not really uh, matter when it comes to safety hatches, because this button is required by law to bypass the safety hatch. Um, and so when you press that, it's going to release no matter what. And so, you know, low hanging fruit on that one for General Motors would be to, you know, reconfigure this button so it cannot be accidentally pressed while the car is underway. And then, who knows, there's also, you know, the, the less obvious uh, things that could be happening, which is, yes, there could be some kind of weird power surges or electronics issue that is somehow, you know, releasing this hood when, when the vehicle is underway, something that we can't easily figure out, something that has to be um, diagnosed, uh, which will probably take a significant amount of time and diagnostic equipment for General Motors to do. Um, and, you know, it could be uh, ECU all the way down to the electronic pathways, you know, so anywhere in there, uh, there could be an issue and we don't know yet. Now, what will I be doing? I'm probably going to pull the fuse. Um, there is a fuse that is behind the um, glove box um, that powers uh, the front, um, you know, trunk area, and I'll probably just pull it until it gets sorted out. Um, certainly, I don't have a need to use that area of the vehicle um, badly enough uh, to risk, you know, any type of dangerous situation. So that's actually what I'll be doing.